decided to do it with unencumbered funds, and the, the um, uh, attorney, uh, uh, Barbara Lohman, suggested they put it in a warrant article, and uh, they decided to uh, not do that. This project has also changed numerous times. Just in the last month, I'm going to take a guess, and, and, I, and I think I'm going to be lowballing it. There's been about three major changes just in the last 30 days. Can you imagine how many changes would exist in the next 365 days? That, that would bother me a lot. Um, for all those reasons, I don't think that that's why I wouldn't vote for it. And, and, it's, and I'd want to vote for, for it very, very much. I really, I really do, because you know, I, some, when I walk through that school, you know, I feel bad or sometimes as embarrassed as anybody that that school doesn't look, you know, almost like Prospect Mountain. But I can't give the twenty million dollars to the school board. And my problem is, I don't understand why we don't have a Warren article asking for four or five million dollars that could be put into that building and renovate part of that building at a time. Ten million dollars in that building. That building will look like the Taj Mahal. I mean, we don't need to go twenty, thirty million dollars for these schools when we have a perfectly good building there that we can renovate for five million to eight million dollars. Well, you put eight, ten million dollars into that building. That building will look like the Taj Mahal. It might look like the Taj Mahal, but it's not going to be the specs and everything that it has to be. Of course, it will. And you can say that sitting there. We have gone through this. When we've done all this. We've done the due diligence. We've done it for years. If there was a five million dollar bid, we would have accepted it. What's been the it, attendance rate of the school board to this buildings and grounds committee? Have you people of the school board been going to all of the meetings of the buildings and grounds people? Ask Steve Parker. He's a member of the Building and Grounds Committee. Yeah. Yeah. They just want. They just want to spend it. Fifty percent. You know what? We're, I thought we were here to talk about the budget and not about the school board's attendance at stuff. It's all part of it. Oh, wait, this, wait excuse me, but no, this is our meeting. This is let me finish. No, 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 no. I'm part of this committee oh, right geez. now, and I'm talking, and I'd like to finish, please. And I, I gave you respect. Well, you slandered the school board, and you ran us into the ground, and I'm sick to death of it. Oh, you know, so you talk about lack of transparency about the telephone system. That's not going. That's going to go out to bid. That wasn't even, that's not coming out of end of year funds. It's coming out of an E rate grant. Let's get the record straight. You know, you talk about uh, um, you know, there's, no, there's no plan B. There's all these other warrant articles for bathrooms, for windows, for many other things. You know, if this doesn't pass, we do have things we have to address, whether it's windows, roof, whatever. You know, there's all these other things we have to address. We do have a plan B. We've had a plan B for a while, but we've put off doing those things, doing due diligence, waiting for something like this to pass. I'm not going to go head to head with every contractor or, or everybody who's in there, whether they're there to put a roof on the place or to put in, in heating and cooling. What I'm there to do, it, we hire a clerk of the works for that. We hire somebody who's competent to oversee it. That's what we do. If I'm there watching every nail being driven, that's not my job. And as a board member, I'd be ashamed to be that micromanaging of anybody. Well, you just brought up the, the grounds over in the... Uh, the lawns over to the play fields over to the Prospect High School. High School. The septic system. That was because no school board members were involved in that project. Why are you shoveling off the roof? Because no school board members were watching when they were putting in the wrong roof rafters. Yes, you do have a... a I, I'm sorry, but you do have an obligation. If you're the school board member, the clerk of the works tells you there's problems. Right. It wasn't done over the Prospect Mountain High School. Right. Go dig up the clerk of the works. I spent three years over there because of the mess of nobody foreseeing that. You people are getting the money. It's not the clerk of the works. It's not going to be Kathy Oblinas. It's not going to be the superintendent. The school board is going to have that money. You, I agree you're not going to watch every nail, but my gosh, you're going to have to go in there and say, I'm not approving this change order. I see the clerk of the work says this isn't right. It's got to be straightened out. You do have an obligation when there's a project. You can't say it doesn't matter. It, and these people, wait a matter. second now, I'll say something. 
These people came up, put in their time for all of these meetings, and I've heard you people hardly showed up. I feel sorry for these people that came up the other night, and they've got passion about this. They've got a passion about this. I don't see it with the school board. I don't see any passion from you people. You didn't even show up for the first meeting. Not until they the get the budget. The first meeting we had about this, none of you showed up. None of the school board members come up. The, the first meeting, we, wait a minute, the first budget meeting? No, no, the no, first no. meeting the when we went over the 18 the million. On the 15th. Is that what you're referring to? A school yes. board member showed up that day. She was late and she was ill. She and wasn't late. She said that she was not supposed to be there. She, she said specifically in but the she minutes. she showed up, correct? Where's the other four? You know what? Where were the other four? Yeah. That's not what No we're passion. Who was supposed to be there? Was she the one that was appointed to be I am not going to gonna answer that. That's up to them to answer that, not up to me. That's not what we're here to discuss tonight. We're All here right. to discuss the budget. You want, five million, you want $20 million and it's not an issue. That you people don't show up for meetings. That you don't can't logically I didn't say present it something. Tonight, I didn't say what did you it people wasn't pull? Issue. What did you people pull? You didn't even have your number ready. You didn't, didn't even have your number ready for this article, and we're going to give you twenty-one million dollars. Because we didn't have the final number from. Because from you the did. Insurances. You didn't do your job. Hey, right, now Barbara wants to speak. I I would just like to say that um, going back to. In March of 2008, when there was a big splash in the newspaper that we were mandated to purchase land, and I called the state and found out, no, we were not mandated. And that, that was the beginning, and that's what really got me interested in what, and, and kind of got me going and everything, and looking into things, and I started attending meetings. Then there was the $30,000 that a subcommittee voted for um, inappropriately for an architect whose contract had run out and that became a big stink and then the lawyer misinformed the public at last year's deliberative session and I came to a school board meeting and I asked for clarification to the public I was promised that that was going to be done that was never done and you know you sit here and say well we will hire we will hire no the taxpayers will hire the taxpayers are on the hook for this and I really honestly wholeheartedly do not believe the taxpayers can bear the burden of uh, pay increases to the staff all the the technology and every line item that we've been through that every single line item must have cannot cut cannot live without and now this on top of it there's no give and take there's no um, compromise and I honestly honestly believe with the numbers of foreclosures short sales people who are in jeopardy of losing their homes people who have lost their jobs and don't forget New Hampshire unemployment never ever reflects and the national unemployment levels never ever reflect self-employed individuals who are not working and New Hampshire has predominantly the history of New Hampshire is small businessmen self-employed people so are we getting an accurate picture of that no because you know what my husband's self-employed and I will tell you right now everybody he knows is barely working and there have been major major job losses in the state in the in the industry so I don't believe that the the you know and, it, and it's too many too many issues of um, mistrust with the information you know this is said and then that is said and this is said and then you when and it's and, and there's a level of anger when clarification is asked for and I don't believe that should be so that's my personal and but really I don't believe the taxpayers can bear the, the cost of of everything as a whole you know and that's and if if that's your belief or your your point of view that's i i respect that but to go after the school board for certain things attendance i'm on nine committees and subcommittees this year i get to as much stuff as i possibly can some nights there's conflicts when there is i let the chair know always i get meeting minutes i stay informed i'm not able to be everywhere at once this year we had a lot of conflicts going on with negotiations with everything else i mean i had first night in december first week in december i had nine meetings in one week i got to as much as i could obviously there's things you can't get to when you've got a week like that you do the best you can you know but in addressing your concerns about um you know the the building and and this plan we've got you know, in a way, we have made a compromise. We wanted a new school originally. We looked at that. The Buildings and Grounds Committee looked at that. We've looked at land. We've looked at ways we could expand. We've worked hard to come up with something in the center of town based on input that we got. We wanted to renovate the school because it is in a good location in town. We're not looking for a new school. You know, we could. Pro it would probably 
you know, we could probably, you know, knock it down and, and or go somewhere else and build, you know, but this is where we wanted to do it. This is based on input we've got. The first plan we got and the first numbers we got, we got a lot of feedback about it. We got into a buildings and grounds meeting and said, you know, there's, you know, $27 million, that's just way too much money. We can't wrap ourselves around it. We can't put that in front of the taxpayers. So we come up with $18 million. We pare it down, and this is what we bring forward. So in some ways, we have compromised. We're still asking for a renovation, but we've tried to make it more palatable. We've presented you with information about taxes. You know, personally, I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing where the prospect um, bond is going to be paid off, and that's an exciting thing. And I'm thankful for the oversight of the board that made that decision 10 years ago to do that. that. That was a great plan because now it opens up room for us to, to give something back to the Alton Central School and to do something for that. I'd just like to clarify when I was saying there's no room for compromise, I meant that when you look at the not just the building and you know and, and that building has a long history of lack of maintenance. We all know it, we've all admitted mm -hmm. it, it's there, it's that's the elephant in the living room whether we like it or not. And so it's unfortunate because today we're paying the price for past mistakes of, you know, past mistakes. But when I say compromise, you know, there's, in the, in the, in the contract, there's no uh, increase to the copay for health benefits. You know, there's no, there's no compromise. And when you look at all the monies that are being spent, it's all must have. Level 10, high priority, can't ever cut anything. In Christie's own words the other night, you don't get to ever get rid of anything that you've got. You always add to it, and that's that's what we're seeing. Whether it's in a program, whether it's paying this one or staying current, whether oh the threat that um, staff will leave and and will never maintain quality staff in this economy, really, no. It, that's what I'm talking about. Compromise. You can't call a point in order from the crowd. From the crowd? That's not what I said. You can't so call a point order from out there. No. Hmm? No, you can't. Not. We'll look at the minutes. I, and if I'm they're sorry wrong, if I misquoted we'll you. It, okay? I'm just saying that there's no, there's no compromise in the whole thing. That was my interpretation of what you were saying because you were talking about the after correct. school program. And you didn't want to get rid of anything and you wanted to bring in new programs. Right. I, I've so. got a question. No, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no school aid. Right, or at state school aid, is correct. there any prediction of when it might come back? Right now, it's probably best to assume it's not going to. Have it come back. That's the avenue. No, so no. is there a lot of... There is talk, excuse me, there is talk of the most needy situations where it's emergency or security issue with the, with the building itself, and that is going to be very far and few in between and very scrutinized. I don't even know what the percentage would be on that, but it, in our district where we are I don't believe but now because there's no state aid mm -hmm. is there some state regulations that are enforced because we have to take state aid if we took state aid we'd have to do but now that we're not getting state aid we don't have to no we still have to follow ed, ed, the educational okay. rules we still have to follow all those for size the um, the state the issue about state aid if we were to get it under the way it is now um, it's only for life safety issues and I don't know if you're familiar with fire codes and things like that um, we would be getting approximately I think it was something like thirty thousand dollars if we were to even bother going for it at that point it was a pittance in you know it, it's a drop house. in the bucket really compared and literally a tiny house. drop compared to what's in here and that that was from a buildings and grounds meeting that I was at in um, I'll say it was November that we had that discussion about state aid and what you know okay what's what with that so it was kind of like one of those it's almost not worth filling out the paperwork and jumping through the hoops and everything else for it but we still have to meet code we still have to meet thank you to touch on um, your question or your statement about plan a plan b there actually have been because you know we've been following this personally for quite a long time the original plan was a full package everything and it was much higher they scaled that back they realized that was still too much. They broke it into three sections. I think they've gone pretty far to present multiple plans to the voters. No, I, I, I meant plan A, plan B to the voters. Let the voters choose one they or did. the other. They no, said, no, here. Yeah, plan A, the original, they realized that the full mm -hmm. package is too much. Plan A is just the renovation. No, no, we no. only have plan A. It's no. either $18 million or nothing. Oh. On nothing. Oh. There is no plan B. No, so and there, all the design it's and not a pro, it, Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Virgil, let him finish yeah. speaking. I'm sorry. I don't want this to sound, but you haven't worked with an architect or such. You haven't gone out. You haven't reviewed. You haven't presented. 
So it's hard for you to say you can do this for $10 million. I've worked with many architects. I understand. Many. That's very well, good, but that there's not a million dollar jobs. Present it. Uh, the other thing too is the school was designed with no with no job. monies. I there were no it. limitations set on what what they thought that they felt could be spent. So the architects just you know they created a wish list. Oh, this oh, grand plan was drawn up, and then you know we never got the numbers until just recently. Can so. I well, actually, can I, you mentioned the word wish list, and actually it didn't. It started with a curriculum committee um, that actually sat down and said, this is what we need to have, you know, what's, what's favorable in a school as far as the school environment, whether it's air quality, lighting, um, what is it that we need for, for, a good work, for a good learning environment for the students. And that's one of the things that we looked at first. We took that, the, and this was actually two years ago. This was before I was a board member when I was first a Buildings and Grounds Committee member. There was this curriculum committee that, that worked on this. My husband was a part of that committee. Um, they looked at all these things. They went through surveys. They went to other schools. They did other site visits. Um, just to see what the schools had done that had recently done renovations. Um, a really good example, I don't know if you've seen um, Kingswood, if you've had a chance to walk through it, I got to walk through it. Um, it was this early this fall, and what they've done, they were still in process of doing it, but what, some of the changes they've done there were really impressive. But the lighting, the air quality, just things like that that were just really different. I'd been in there once before, and it was just very 60s looking inside. They'd really it was really a light bright, but it also accommodated a modern education. You know, one of the things that we have a problem with now is we don't have enough um, data data drops in, in a room. You know, we don't have enough electrical um, outlets. Outlet. Just simple, really simple things. But these are things that, you know, for us to pay an electrician to come in and put that stuff in now, you know, you're dealing with firewalls, you're dealing with all kinds of stuff. You know, you're looking at more expense. You know, we do have things that we can do if this gets voted down. You know, if this Did gets the voted curriculum? down, we do have we do have ways that we can, you know, keep up with things, keep up with the roof, whatever. But we don't want to do a lot because we would rather do a renovation. It would be more cost effective in the long run. The product, the finished product would be something we could be proud of in this this town. You know, I know that a lot of was put off with the school for a while and I've I've watched the board for several years put things off in anticipation of upcoming projects. Big I'm talking big changes, you know, the things that we have have changed windows, bathrooms, all that look wonderful. I mean, it, nice, very nice difference. And I, I know you've gotten some feedback about that. But you know, the thing is, is that these um, we haven't touched certain areas because we would like to save that for when we renovate. So we do the most cost effective. You know, material. The price of materials is not going down; it's going up. You know, a project like this could help create jobs in this area. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of factors in here. It's not a huge tax impact for the most part. I look at it and I say, am I willing to pay this for an improvement to the school? Yeah, I am. Are times tight in my household, like Barbara's? Yep, I'm self-employed too. I get it. I totally get it. But you do the best you can. You know, it's 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 so what we question. see is feasible. Did the curriculum uh, team that looked into went around and taught all these schools was there ever any um, question of whether or not a new school actually improved education or improved their test scores? Did it's you look quite into a bit it? Of data. A correlation? Yeah, there's quite a bit of data on that, and it, it does. It does help with that because you know it helps with several things. I mean, morale, things like that. But you're not. You have students who aren't um, distracted by the temperatures in the room. You have students who aren't distracted by you know. Uh, Ever try to find a bathroom in Alton Central? But there's concrete you know? proof I mean, that it, pro it, it improves there test scores. There is, and I can get you more data on that. There's, there's actually quite a few articles out there on that. Um, lighting, natural lighting is a big deal, especially in the winter. And if you're dealing with some children, as you may know, you know, if you've got children with um, any, uh, you know, I've, I've got a child who's special needs, and on a, a dark, rainy day, it's a lot different for him than it is on a sunny day as far as his attention span and things like that. You know, that makes a difference for, for a child. And if you, can, oh, yeah. if you can have that natural lighting in a room, if you can have, you know, the room set up in an optimal way where, you know, the computers aren't a distraction to certain students, you know, you have more, more places to plug in, more ways you can reconfigure your classroom, it's certainly a plus for, you know, it's certainly a win-win situation for not just the teacher but the students as well. And it's it's a health and well-being issue, and it's all tied into learning because you know how much just the littlest thing can affect a child. So, the first night that uh, this was presented to us, Kathy Holtz came in and said, "We just worked on this, and here's the plans." And she said, "The architect hasn't worked on this yet. He doesn't know it will if it will work or not." 
I believe that was a misunderstanding. The she didn't say that. No. She did. Yeah. What they they brought those in. No, the architect actually did look at that that prior when she came in. She came in with the. Uh, this was when they first looked at it and they realized it was the 27 million, too big. What can we do? What they were reviewing at that time was pulling the gym out, rearranging the interior configuration, and that was done with the architect, with the building and grounds committee. Uh, my understanding was that it was not completely signed off, but she had the meeting with us. It had happened the night prior. The architect was working on it that next day still. She came in to let us know how they were trying to adapt to the overage that they knew would not get through the budget and present what they were going to be going forward with. So it was not done by you know, the school board building grounds committee sitting down and thinking, how can we change this? But that's what she said. Uh, you might, might want to go back through and just uh, well, I, listen okay. to it again. I, I believe it was a misunderstanding because that's not how I interpreted it. Where can I see the Ed Specs? Um, that is um, the, SAU office. the whole yeah, big book of Ed Specs. Book. Yeah, we have that book at the SAU office. I've got it electronically, as but I don't know. Chip has them in his office as well. The other thing with this is you might want to print something that the bond at the high school will be paid up before you take this out. And that's something so I'd like to do. People don't confuse the two, saying we've got a bond there. One of the problems we have. We're not borrow another one. Yeah, and one of the problems we have with going through anything like this with DRA is, um, you know, they don't like that kind of information mm -hmm. in. And you've seen it on the town level. I've heard it yeah. for years as meeting recorder and all that. You know, it'd be nice to put that in there to just say this is not going to be, you know, this isn't going to be the impact that you think it might be. The other be. one's paid or something. Right, in fact, for a year, things are going to go down, you know, altogether, and then the next year, because the first year, there's no payment that comes out from this. Yeah, there is. So, you know, I it's mean, small it's... Amount. I, I know that the board in the past, you know, prior to my coming on it, um, you know, has tried to work to get something through for that school. It's been known even before the roof failed that we, we had some issues in the school that needed to be addressed, whether it was There's plumbing, no electrical, or whatever. But knowing what I know now from my involvement on this, you know, it's... You know, there's a lot more issues than I, I would have I would have guessed just from you know walking through a room or just knowing that it's an older building. You know, it looked to me when we first moved to town, and we, we picked Alton because of the school. My my husband's a public school teacher. That's why we moved here. It had a good reputation for education. And when we moved here, one of the things walking through it, it just looked like it was patchwork together. You know, it just you could you can almost see. You know, in fact, in some places you actually can, where something was added on, a wall was taken out, that kind of thing. So, you know, we, we'd like to have a school that would be that would draw new families to town, that would um, be something to be proud of. Something, you know, it, it's not necessarily about um, enrollment right now. You know, when when the board had a NESDEC study done in 2006, we were we were living in different times then. It was a little bit different economy. They were projecting a lot more growth here. We had a lot of subdivi um, subdivisions and things like that on paper that had not gone through. I know that real estate is picking up. I know that um, construction is pick starting to pick up. You know, just just around here in town, just what I'm seeing. Well, to me, it's I mean, two thirds of the tax bill now goes to school. I don't think it's quite that. Way. It's, it's yeah. quite a bit. It's over half of my tax bill goes just to the school. Part of that is it's actually got to broken stop out somewhere. Part of that is actually broken out between the state and the local. Oh, no, the state so. stays here with the school too. State don't take that money. That money stays right here with, in the no, town. No, I'm saying part of your tax bill actually is. I, if you look yeah. at your bill, there is a. It'll say state, but, but that state. money does not leave the town. But, but by the Claremont rule. might say we're, state, but it does not leave the town. Right, but by Claremont rule, we're a donor town. We're not a recipient town, you know, just because of the tax base we've got here. You know, it doesn't mean I agree with that. I'd rather see that money stay here, quite frankly. That money for the state doesn't, you know, we, we, we get back very little from the state, really, and we get back very little from, from the federal, you know, it's it, but there's a lot we have to do, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of mandates we have to meet for that. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's also another issue. Um, one of the charges to the budget committee from the taxpayers is to look out in their, in their best interests. The taxpayers over the last 10 years that have paying taxes have been looking forward to some tax relief from the bond, not to continue uh, having the same or higher taxes, but actual tax relief, and that's, and that's really not going to show up. Now, 
The very easy argument is to say it's a nickel here, it's six cents here, it's 14 cents there. Before you, before you know it, we're talking about real money. Uh, for instance, there are people in town that are making decisions every day. Do I put on my oil heat or do I put, another, or do I put wood in my, um, f uh, my fireplace to, to warm myself? Those are hard decisions. Okay, and, that, and those decisions are hundreds of dollars. That's hundreds of dollars decisions. And those people are making uh, that decision on a, on a very, very uh, uh, basic level. And what they don't expect is while they're, while they're cutting back from oil to wood, for instance, or do I take this prescription and not this prescription this month? Um, what, do I, uh, what do I do? Well, I have to pay more of the same taxes when Oh my God, I almost had a couple of hundred extra dollars. Oh my God, I almost had a few extra uh, hundred dollars. For the person, you know, who, who has, you know, um, a lot, you know, ha has significant income, you're absolutely right. Another two or three or four hundred dollars, you know, is not that critical. Okay, and you might as well give it to the school as anybody else. I agree, you know, I agree with that 100%. But we still have to look out for the, the people in town where our welfare contribution is at an all-time high, where the homelessness the ho uh, in uh, Alton is at an all-time all high, and, and, there's, uh, always, and there's been a significant increase in the requests for uh, charitable contributions that you'll see on the town budget. So I understand the economics of this. A nickel here, a dime here, 15 cents here. But there are people out there who are absolutely were looking for relief from this after 10 years, not increasing it another 20 and turning 10 years into 30 years. If I can interject something. And I want to clarify, the town port, the state portion of that taxes stays here 100%. There's no more donor town or any of that. 100% of that state tax stays here. But there's still a Claremont rule where where rural towns receive funding. I mean, there, there was. But that's not the part of our tax bill. <laughs> that's not part of our tax bill. I, that state portion of that tax bill stays in Alton. Then where does the state get the money for it? No, I, I I've it, checked it on it two or three different times, and that 100 percent of that state portion of our tax bill stays in Alton. So you get the school portion and the state portion. The other thing, Krista, is, you know, you say it's, it's 11 cents per thousand, it's 12 cents, it's 13 cents, but really it's on top of what we're already paying. And that's the rest of the statement that always seems to be omitted. If, well, if I can interject in this, that kind of keys into what Steve said too, but, um, you know, when Prospect Mountain was built, I remember there was a bumper sticker going around town that it takes a high school to ruin a village. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that the, um, the tax rate went down really? with the building of Prospect Mountain. Assessments went up. Somebody had a bumper sticker saying that? Oh, yeah, this bumper, this bumper my next door neighbor has one, yeah. So. <laughs> Freedom of speech. Still. Yeah, exactly. And I respect that. That's fine, you know. Um, but my point is that, you know, the, the prospect, when Prospect Mountain was Today built, you know, guess. tax rates went down, assessments went up. You know, that's something to look at. You know, we've, we've got data on it. I've got tax history all broken out by town rate, local school rate, state school rate, county rate, and the grand total from 2000 through 2011. Yeah, but my, t my taxes didn't go down. The tax rate might have went down, but my taxes didn't go down. The assessment went up, mm -hmm. but my taxes stayed the same and kept going up. But your so they didn't go down. The tax rate went down, tax yes, rate, but yes. my taxes didn't go down. Right. Yeah. And your budget for the school didn't go down. Are we ready to vote? It's gone. Ready to vote? Yep. Are you speaking to the mic? Mark Dekoff, no. Steve Miller, no. Lawrence Tilley, yes. Virgil McDonald, no. Barbara Howard, no. Lauren Kai, no. Chris Rogeropoulos, yes. Two yeses, five noes. Or six noes, right? No, five noes. Five noes. Mm -hmm. Article four. Two. <coughs> got a motion? I make a motion we accept article four as written. Second for discussion. Any discussion? Um, 
Have we thought about solar too with the geothermal? We've thought about solar. Yeah, that's that's something we've looked at. I mean, there's there's you know there's other alternatives too. Uh, you know, we've looked at wind power too over at the high school. I know you've heard about the study on that. We've we've looked at solar, but one of the problems we've got is we don't have a whole lot of space for it. Um, to, to do an adequate solar panel there, you'd need, I mean, you need more than the roof space for just that, to do an adequate solar panel, to, to make it worth the while and to make it worth the payoff. So I don't have data on that. It's just stuff we've talked about. And what we've got for land there, we don't have a lot to work with. We're actually under the state requirement um, by just a little bit on what we've got for land right at this time. It's supposed to be um, 10 acres for every 500 students and then an extra acre for every 100 students after after that so that's well, a, go, an administrative suggestion it right, is not a legal requirement mm -hmm. please clarify that's right that is a state that is actually that's a that's a state requirement as far as i'm trying oh, to i don't know about that is and that's out of the nesdex study that i'm referring to from 2006 i can get you a copy of then, it so the concord schools that they've fixed and everything else they're all illegal they're not illegal they do i waive. believe they're grandfathered or they're wavered. Grandfathered, they're wavered in we've got a waiver uh, Solars are not very economical for up here either. We've done uh, some look at it for our home, and uh, there's a lot of data that's provided through um, EPA and uh, some other sites. And regionally speaking, we don't have this, you know, the number of daylight hours that make it economical. Chip looked at um, solar and the paybacks, not the same. Oh. They, they, just a question that's um, that's just popped up, and it's, it's strictly hearsay, um, is that um, over uh, the high, Kingswood High School, which has geothermal, uh, due to the um, initial bills that the um, they turn the heating off at two o'clock every day. Does it cost too much? That's because it costs too much. And so my 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 question is: Do you know anything about that? Do you know anything about you know what happens in the summer for the five or ten days? Do you need it? Do they really forego it when they look at a cost per day basis? Do they uh, not put on the air conditioner? That I you know what that I don't know. But in thinking about you know the comments that were made the other night about air conditioning and heating and all that, you know one of the things that you could look at with this with being able to cool the school is that it would certainly kill the argument for not being able to have a longer school year. You know, I mean, it would kind of knock that down because it's a lot cheaper to heat a school than it is to cool a school, as you may know. But, you know, we could look at actually do, ex doing an extended school year program versus the, the traditional one that we've done now with the big summer break and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, we, we, could, we could actually do a lot more with that kind of thing. You mm -hmm. know, it's not necessarily that we're, we're wanting to turn it into Club Med or anything like that by air conditioning it. But, you know, if it's more comfortable for conducive learning, you know, it gets above 90 degrees and I don't know, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it can get a little uncomfortable. So, you know, I mean, to do something like that is certainly feasible and, and you know, I don't know. Just throwing yeah, that out there. My personal feeling is that if, if if the project is adopted, the $18 million project is adopted, then it makes sense to have the geothermal because the spreadsheet numbers look good, even with the, um, you know, the inherent cost of the bond fixed in. You know, it still comes out you know, as a positive return. Yeah, so, so that's why I will probably v uh, vote for this article, even though I voted against the project itself, because I, I still think the people vote, and mm -hmm. I go along with whatever the voters vote, you know, and with no tears. Right. And, you know, one of the things that I noticed the other night, you know, when Chip gave you the spreadsheet and everything, you seemed pleased with the numbers, and I was too. I hadn't seen quite all that data yet. You know, it, it, was, uh, it, it was quite a, uh, <coughs> you know. It, it's it, a relatively short time to pay it. It, it really is, and you know, I I know that there's a lot of reservations about this just because it's a fairly new way of heating and cooling. You know, it's something very different. But you can't deny that you know there's some. This it gives us some flexibility for what we can do in the building too. Um, I think it would make the building more user friendly, if you will, for the entire community, not just for the for the students. You know, there was discussion the other night with the gym and everything about that being more of a town thing and stuff like that too. This could also help enhance that as well, so something to consider. I'd just like to point out that Chip did admit um, 
that he didn't really know how to estimate the electrical. I think that's an unknown still. Um, we haven't really gotten expert information on the increase to the electric. And also, don't forget he's going to benefit by this project. So of course, he's going to push numbers that are going to look good. Um, he provided uh, three cases. And even the worst case still paid for the unit before the bond was over. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still relatively new. And I look at it as a want item, not an absolute need item. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they turn the power off at two so that they can change over the service so they can work on the school. It's not that they're, they need the electricity. Okay. Work. Thank you. Any other questions? No. No. <laughs> no? Okay. I might have another question for you later. Thank you. No, I was impressed you, with Linda. the numbers on this. That's so, so the electrician can you can put us build it. That's in. great. Okay. <laughs> Better than a crispy electrician. <laughs> Are you ready to take the vote? Mm hmm. Aye. Right. Mark Decoff, yes. Steve Miller, yes. Lawrence Tilly, yes. Berger McDonald, yes. Barbara Howard, no. Lauren Kai, yes. Christopher Geropolis, yes. Six yeses, one no. Article 5. Any motion? Make a, uh, make a motion we accept it as read. Seconded. Okay, I really have. I, You've heard uh, my position so far, and just to reiterate, um, we're looking at approximately 15,000 square feet in terms of uh, uh, gym space. Uh, what's actually, actually absolutely usable is some larger percentage of that number. But that, that being said, I don't think there is a place for two gyms. I think there's a place for one gym. I think the fact that there are community activities that may or may not make it difficult for the kids to participate at the gym. That's, a fun, that's for school management to determine, and, and they set the priorities. If they don't want the kids in the gym, then give it to the community. That being said also, I honestly believe that it's the town's function to provide either a gym or a social hall or a community house you know, for, uh, for the adults and for the people. It is not, for, it, it, it's the school children should not uh, pay the burden for the parents. I think it still, should be the, it still should be the other way around. And I can see no justification in having 15,000 square feet of gym space, two gyms, I, and I understand that it, it expands the cafeteria, we got more room to eat, Etc. But there had to be a better idea than just to build another gym. Well, this was put on the Warren article because it came forward by a petition Warren article. This would have been on there whether the board had adopted it or not. Um, we had a petition presented to us at our last board meeting, and there were, I believe, 56 signers to the petition. Um, they did this in response to the Buildings and Grounds Committee removing the gym from the original plan that was presented. Um, the Buildings and Grounds Committee did it with the justification that they were trying to keep the expense low so that the overall bond would be, you know, the payment and everything would be more palatable to, um, to the, uh, the taxpayers. Um, so the board adopted this in good faith. Um, just because of the, the petition warrant article that was brought forward to us. It was something we had been asked to consider by a few com community members. And as you said earlier, you know, you, you do what the voters ask you to do. You know, I don't know if you're aware, but this room you're meeting in now, the upstairs of it used to be the gym for the town. There's a, there's a basketball court. It's all sectioned off, and it's all storage now. But there was more community centers and things like that here. Was it this room too, Lauren? I've just seen part room? of the, that. I've never been all the way up through into the bell tower. But there was more years ago. This is where we used town. to play when we were kids. Yep, and I know town meeting used to happen in this, you know, in this area. There was a balcony, and that's where all this wall is now. But, you know, years ago, there was actually more in town than there is now. There you know, is a there's public basketball court, too, down by the fire station. Yeah, but that's, but that, that basketball court, and, and yeah, we've gone down there to play and stuff, but there's, um, that's seasonal, of course. You know, we're talking about a gymnasium that can be used year-round. Basketball season is in the winter. You know, if, if you're playing the sport. So, you know, I, I understand that the, the community's uh, interest in this, and that's why it's on here. That, that's why I have a real concern. It was going to be brought by a private citizen, no matter what, who had the, the, the proper amount of signatures, so it was going to absolutely be on the ballot. 
when you voted, the school board voted unanimously to adopt it yourselves as opposed to letting it come from the community. What you're saying is every single one of you, you know, decided a second gym makes sense. That's what you decided, because it was going to come anyway. They did, they, the petitioner didn't need your help to bring the special one article and put it on here. Okay, so I don't, I don't see the need for it, and I, to this, to this moment, even after you explaining it, I still don't see how it is so important that you're, you're willing to vote for a second gymnasium as a school board member, that you have to have it. Your school, your school board member. Yeah. Um, she's more of a sports person than I am. I would vote for two gyms personally because, first of all, when they're doing the building, as you all know, when you have somebody there and they're doing the renovations, it'd be much better to take and do the extra right there so it doesn't cost twice as much. You have the area to do it. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if okay. you're going to ask the town to do it, is it coming out of my right pocket or my left pocket? It's the same money. I mean, well, we're in the middle of a renovation. I, I just think it's the perfect time to do it. The gym there has some issues. It was made a long time ago. It doesn't meet the specs that are needed to be met. Also, with the new gym, there'll be more flexibility to do the lunch times. I don't know if you've ever gone to Alton Central at lunchtime. If you're way at the back of the line, you got about five minutes to eat. And this way, we'll be able to set up. We'll have more room in the cafeteria. We'll have more room for the kitchen to get out more meals or more quicker. And then we can also change the times. I think we have four lunch periods now. So you've got some kids that are eating at 10 o'clock in the morning, which is basically right when they get in. The and then 12.45 is the last lunch. But so. Why wouldn't you, for instance, instead of just keeping the old gym, adding a new gym, if, caf if the cafeteria is the significant problem, then add 500 to 1,000 or 1,500 square feet just to that. But the problem is with the, the building, the, building. The, the present building that we have is really not conducive to a lot of the changes that we're talking about. At 18 million, it's conducive to a lot of changes. Well, that's what's going to take place, yes. Yeah. I've got a question. Could, have the, uh, could the gym be added without everything else being done? Because it's going to be You separate. mean just the gym? Just the gym. I suppose if they it voted could have. for so, that, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah, wait a minute. So if that petition warrant article had come from the petitioner, it probably wouldn't have said this article is contingent upon the approval of Article 3? No, it was going to be written exactly the same way. Yeah. The, was the it? petitioner yeah. is yes. here. It was, was going it? to be okay. written exactly the same way. Okay. So, Do you want the petitioner to speak? No, no, no. He just did. He <laughs> said yes. Okay. I'm just saying. Because no, I mean, you could have done just the gym. Yeah, yeah. And then you would have but alleviated that, your problem with your cafeteria. Uh, yes and no. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't I mean, have been the, using it as a gym anymore? No, that, but then there's still, it, I mean, the whole, still it's construction the whole package. The I mean, that's why you look at it as a whole place. package. It's not one okay. or the other. If you would have done the gym, yes, we probably could have done something there, but there's still the classroom space and the, the modulars. I mean, you know, it's yeah. not, you can't just say, do this piece and everything's okay. It's, that's why it was done the way it's done. Okay. Yeah, I like that this was broken out separate because this is probably the one part of the whole project that we're personally very back and forth on. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. $20 a month makes a huge impact on our personal budget, so this is something we're having to really strongly consider. But at the same time, you know, we know children who are having to start their lunch when you would normally be doing snack time for a child, not lunch time. Um, that has a strong impact on that child's afternoon because their body's chemistry is not right for, you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But at the same time, you know, it seems to be this focus coming on as this is a second gym. You know, the freeing up that space is for, is, as a second gym, is for after hours and weekends. During the weekdays, you know, you have a gym and you have a cafetorium. That cafetorium is primarily for cafeteria duties. You're not supporting the public, you're not supporting the adults, you're not supporting, you know, anybody else during school hours. And that's where this really is needed. The fact that you can benefit by it extra mm -hmm. is not, you know, Mm -hmm. the yes or no on the whole project. My issue was, is that an architect generally gets, I don't know he's being paid, but an architect gets about 8% of the deal, of the total amount, okay? Eight, figure 8% of $18 million, it's a million four, okay. or something like that. If you're paying an architect a million four, he, and you tell him, these are my constraints, you come up with something, 
okay? And the answer would not be, well, two gyms. It's not two gyms. It's mm -hmm. you have a gym. No, you're, and, and you're adding, yeah. No, you've, they've added a gym. To the they've taken the this one. cafeteria. <laughs> they've expanded the kitchen cooking space. They've expanded the cafeteria space to support normal lunch hours well, for the I'm population. I'm saying that you it can't, be, it should have been you another, can't use. A better, more, in my estimation, as a layman, a better, more efficient plan Okay, then adding a $2 million gym. That's the whole problem with the schools they're not playing. You can't use a kid eating at 10 o'clock saying, well, well, that's why we need it. You cannot do that. Do like the rest of the schools do and put, have the school board do it the right thing and put a bowl of fruit or something out at the classroom doors like New Durham does, like all of Wolf Kingswood does. So when they go to recess or they have a snack time right in that classroom if them kids are hungry. Uh -huh. And there's a bowl of fruit that sits right outside every classroom door. Uh -huh. You can't say, well, we, we're feeding kids we're at 10 o'clock in the morning, the so now. in the afternoon, they're not all right. All right. <laughs> that's enough. Are we ready to take first. the and vote? And that's up for the school board to make a policy. All right. Can all I right. ask a question? How was the, was the uh, issue going to be solved if you didn't do the gym about the lunch? Lunch and the whole problem. Yeah. It, it's not some, from That's what I understand, to make policies. can I finish? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, I've got two kids that go to that school and they pack snacks with them every day. They eat their lunch at one time. They have a snack at another time. My oldest has the first lunch of the day. I think it's, what is it, 10, 10 45, whatever. He has an afternoon snack. My youngest has the late one. Then he has the morning snack. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's, that part's really not an issue. It's more about when the big meal of the day happens or whatever. You you know, and with little kids, you know, they eat slower. So, you know, you deal with it. That's probably why my youngest has, has the last one. But it's more of an issue with the cafeteria now, the way it is, it's a crowding issue. There's four lunches, you know, for the pre, it's um, first grade through eight in there. It's very noisy. Um, if you go in there during lunch, if you've ever gone in and had lunch with It could be noisy no matter if you put them in a new cafeteria. Well, the thing is, is this classroom, can I finish? There's classrooms nearby, things like that. They have to shut off the lights, quiet it down, you know, things like that. Get the kids' attention. So, you know, it, it's a matter of spacing it out better. It's a matter of having better facilities for not just food service, but also for physical fitness and you know, it's something that can be used by the school. It's something that can be used by by the town. You know, that's certainly an option. So that's what we're looking at. It's used for assemblies. It's used for a lot of things. So, um, you know, it, graduations, what have you. You know, it'd be nice to be able to go back and vote there. You know, we get a lot of complaints about voting at Prospect. People don't like going there because of the walk. The especially older people are handicapped. You know, they have to park right there in front, and it's still a decent walk. And they have to go down that ramp to go to go vote. You know, in the auditorium, um, it'd be nice to bring the voting back to Alton Central and things like that. And just it's centrally located. It's, it's you could bring it back and just one. put it back in the gymnasium. You could. It would just be, she hasn't answered yeah. my question yet. How are you going to solve the problem, the lunch schedule problem? if you didn't have the gym, the, this, this new gym? The new gym, you're looking at the plan, am I looking at Loring? Right. And this does have a slight variation to the cafeteria. What it does is it takes out two classrooms and it expands the cafeteria area so that there are more space in, allowed for those luncheons. That's why, um, lunch times, that's why the third floor needed to be um, constructed three more classrooms because of the displacement of the classrooms in the cafeteria area without the gym. So we are going to use the third floor? Three areas that was discussed, yep. So That's if... That's why Kathleen Colt was saying to you mm -hmm. that she was trying to work on at that 11th hour. Okay, so then actually the gym isn't to solve the lunchroom problem because this plan does address that. By taking from the original plans, it does not to the extent that it would have if, if the gym were there. Okay. But yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Ready to take the vote? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mark Decoff, no. Steve Miller, no. Lawrence Tilley, yes. Roger McDonald, no. Barbara Howen, no. Warren Kahn, no. Mr. Rogeropoulos, yes. Yes, is five no's. Article 6. Motion. No, um, um, my motion is to accept as read. Uh, submitted. Second. <coughs> my, my issue with um, with this is the, is the way it's set up uh, financially. 
We know that geothermal is going to cost about one and three quarter million dollars. You divide fifty thousand dollars into that, it's going to be thirty five years before you're going to get enough money to uh, do the geothermal, for instance, in the old in the old building. If if God forbid that's still there, and I don't think it will be. That'll be there. Okay. All we're going to end up doing is is taking taxpayers' money, fifty thousand dollars a year for the next up teen years and just put it into a pot that's never going to be used. Between now and 35 years, probably between now and 10 years, there's going to be a change in technology and it may not be ge geothermal. And then there's going to, then, then you would conceivably have a pot, you know, of a few hundred thousand or, a, or you know, a few hundred thousand dollars and you say, well, uh, we're going to do this type of new type of energy now. Let's talk about that. You know, and everybody's going to look, well, we got all this money, we got to spend it. And that's not the way you do it. If you had brought this, for instance, as one point three million, uh, one, one and three quarter million dollars and said we want to bond the one and three quarter million dollars to put geothermal in there now, that's something that would make sense to me. But to just put $50,000 a year in is a total waste of the tax.